and welcome to Yarn Lane. This is the most exciting part of the whole day because just don't we love yarn, knitting, crochet yarn. Really excited about today. So if you haven't seen Yarn Lane before, this is our third week. Oh, can't believe the first two weeks have gone by so fast. We've done knitting and crochet and odd yarn and we've done needle felting. Um, so if you want to shop on Yarn Lane, we are lucky enough to have our very, very own website, which you can get to at www yarnlane.com if there you are there you are can you see can you see there it is if you want to message us or ask us any questions it's you click on watch live and underneath it where all the product is it's there so it's message studio at yarnlane.com everything when you click on watch live everything that is on today's show is down below so can you see the kits and the yarn and all the accessories you need that all lives on the website as well but it just makes it easier for shopping so the way that yarn lo yarn lane works is that every show that we do we have very carefully selected products everything goes together because the best thing is because we started this right at the beginning i've been allowed to shop for just what i need oh it's honestly it's like being in a sweet shop so i come on we're going to come on air we're going to do a show about a shawl so we need oh we need shawl pins we'll buy some of those we need the right needles so that we can offer you exactly what you need i'm passionate about yarn i know that loads of you are as well so this is great so today um oh sorry before i tell you about today we need to talk about shopping so if you want to shop with us you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com or if you'd rather speak to a human being then you can phone us it's a uk call center which makes life a lot easier because it's quicker 0800 4 700 600 so you can either shop with us on the website or 0800 4 700 600 um remember with yarn lane we have one pmp per day and it actually joins together with sewing street so if you've bought anything on sewing street this morning and you buy on yarn lane you only pay one pmp across both brands and it doesn't matter how many times you check out, you still only pay one PMP. But because we're sisters, we're allowed to share that PMP, which is actually quite useful. So if there's anything you've you've bought today already on Sewing Street, your PMP's already done, it's free. Right. Now we've done all the boring stuff. So really excited about that because we've done a lot of crochet so far and I really wanted to get into knitting, but I want to I want to try and bring you things that you can't find easily in other places. I want to bring you small smaller retailers who create their own things that is harder to find that is a bit more niche because we can do that you know that we've we have more buying power and we can go and look and we can find so i came across nicola from twink knits oh love her stuff because she just dyes all this yarn it's fantastic herself all by herself so look it starts like this which is pure pure wool it starts off this lovely cream color this is floor pie i'm going to undo it I'm going to do the hank, but I'd be really careful of those who get knotted. But that's a hank. A that's called a hank, a skein or a hank. I'll ask you in a minute what the difference is. So anyway, that's, there it is. And then she dyes it and hangs it on the washing line. I'd love to live next door to Nicola and see what her washing line is. So we've asked her, she's created some kits for us. She's created three kits, but I said, you know, I know what's going to happen. Everyone's going to want to buy the dyed yarn as well to make their own things so we've got three kits but we've also got the hand dyed yarn so the kit is to make this beautiful shawl which is in three colorways what fun we had um labeling it as well so this one is called c sky, sky. God, i can't even remember blue anything skies. blue skies because it looks oh now i remember now it looks like blue skies because it's got really light blue, turquoisey blue, grey and cream. So it's like all the colours of the skies. I'm just going to put it on so you can see. This is all hand dyed in the UK in Nicola's back garden. In Nicola's back garden in the UK. So isn't it beautiful? Anyway, Nicola assures me this is incredibly easy to knit. It's only got three patterns or something. So she's going to show us in a minute. So this is all with the hand dyed yarn. So in the kit, you get all, you get the pattern. Actually, actually, I've got one out here. So all the patterns there, everything you need, really simple and nice big writing. It's always useful, isn't it? Two stitch markers 
and a whole skein, not Hank. Should we move the boring plain one there? And then you get the whole, isn't that lovely? Look at the colours. I love the way that Nicola chooses her colours because it ranges really from that sort of deep azure turquoise into the cream and the grey as well. That's lovely. So that's the blue one, blue skies. I'll keep that one on. And it's really nice, isn't it, on Yarn Lane that we can help to support independent UK artists and crafters. You know, that we can bring them to air, we can show them what they do, and we can support them, which is even more important at the moment. Right, colour number two... I'm going to go Raspberry Ripple that's on my model. Should I take Mos Raspberry Ripple off the model? Raspberry Ripple is always selling and it really is Raspberry Ripple, isn't it? It's got that real vanilla ice cream background with the Raspberry Ripples. Maybe Nicola been eating Raspberry Ripple ice cream when she did this one. So again, in the um, kit, it's all packed in an organza bag. You get the full instructions, two stitch markers and the yarn. And this beautiful, it is lovely, isn't it? But it's ever so soft, you can tell. It really is very soft. And I think because it's knitted with this lacy effect, it makes it very flexible and very soft as well. But look at it, you, I mean, and I would imagine every single one is unique as well, because the colour change, depending on when you knit, where you knit it, they're just the colour changes all the time. You'll never be able to buy this anywhere else. It's yours or anything like it, it's totally exclusive. And then the final one is called, oh, I remember having to name this one, Autumn Walk, because it is an autumn walk, isn't it? So in this one, you've got shades of golden yellows, deeper copper browns, a bit of cream, but it is a real sort of like shuffling through the leaves. This is currently our most popular. Maybe it's because it's autumn. So in the um, kit for this one, obviously you get it all packed into an organza bag. You get the full instructions, two stitch markers, and then this. But isn't it lovely that when you look at the skein like this, you've got, like, it looks like a stripe of yellow and a stripe of beige and a stripe of brown. But when it's all knitted up, the colours all meld together. But it's beautiful, isn't it? So you know this isn't something you can just go and buy in shops. This is hand-dyed by Nicola in her garden. Well, not in her garden, but it dries in her garden. <laughs> <laughs> in a kitchen. Kitchen garage garden. Kitchen garage garden. Um, also, we have today, let's just whiz through these so we can get onto the actual knitting. If you want to buy some hand dyed yarn for yourself, which um, Hannah Producer does, there is um, 400 metres in each of these skeins. Now, these are made, this is a four ply yarn, it's 80% merino wool, which gives it its real softness, but it's 20% nylon, which gives it its strength. So you get a mixture of the two. And there's enough in one of these to knit a pair of socks or anything else you want to knit, like a shawl, but there is enough to knit a pair of socks. So we've got six different colours for you here. So let's start at the beginning. This one is sugared almond because it really is, isn't it? Oh, okay. Oh, so in the picture on the website, it looks like you're getting two, but I think that's so that they can show the full, the full colourway so you can see how it's done. But you get one, one of these and it's enough for a sock, okay? A pair of socks, not a sock, because that would be rubbish. Or it's enough for a shawl, actually. But aren't they beautiful pastel colours? You've got shades of pink and blue with little splodges of yellow and a little bit of very soft turquoise in there as well. So that's a very good for baby knits because this is four ply as well. It's perfect for baby knits and it's a real multicoloured one as well, isn't it? But anything that does the four ply. Right, the next one I'm going to do is this one. I love this one. This one's called Honeybee because it's mixtures of deep, yellows and greys and creams and you get one skein in it and remember it's four ply 80% merino 20% nylon and there's 400 meters. so it's 100 grams which equates to about 400 meters so a pair of socks baby knits shawls anything that's in a four ply but you won't find this anywhere else because this is hand dyed this is yours everyone is is different and then next we have Cottage Garden. I really like this one because it really, it feels almost impressionist painting Cottage Garden. You've got real subtle shades of sort of the earth and grey and purple 
and the hollyhock colours. And, you know, when you delve deep inside it, you can see even more colours. But again, you won't find this one anywhere else. And every t and every one is slightly different as well due to where the this dye one is. Did, uh, pump some socks. Oh, okay, so Nicola's knitted some socks. So we'll come in, come over to it in a minute. We'll have a look, but you can see what it looks like if you wait. So if I was you, you need to get get your shopping out of the way now, and then you can sit back and watch Nicola knit and talk mm -hmm. through how the colours join and how she does everything. Well, let's just rush through these last two. This one is Pansy Parade because you've got that really deep deep purple colour of a pansy and then the pale and then you've got the yellow that's in the centre of the pansy but when, remember when it knits or crochets up it doesn't come in big blocks it all comes out in lovely colours because you've got those beautiful mixed colours it's ever so soft it's a shame you can't feel it but well you know it's merino wool of course it's soft um, this one hydrangea bouquet because they see all the colours of a hydrangea pink blue green these greeny um there's sometimes the, you get the real greeny yellow ones. That's that sort of shade there. So if you like all of those colours, again, it's ideal for children's knits, baby knits, um, anything for yourself. Lovely for summer weight jumpers or lacy shawls, socks, all of that. And then finally, we've got fruit pastel because it is really, really, really pretty. Um, remember, you only get one. The picture on the website shows two, but that's just so that we can show you. Because as I'm turning it, you can see the colours are changing. I know it's really di it's really difficult to decide, isn't it? But anyway, if you look down below us on the website, you can see all the colours. Um, finally, I want to just talk to you about the last thing, then we'll move on, is the, the book. So I wanted, because Nicola told me that each hank you could knit a pair of socks with, I was looking and looking for sock books and every one that I found, the reviews weren't very good. And I thought, well, I don't want to bring you something where the reviews aren't very good. So I thought, well, I'll ask Nicola, what do you recommend? She said, this is the best book by far. It's called Super Socks with Winnick Mum. Now, Winnick Mum is actually Christine Perry, but she has almost, I honestly, I think, dedicated her life to knitting socks. That's what she does. She teaches workshops. She helps people knit socks. She's written two books. So I found, got her number from Nicola and gave her a ring. So can we buy these off you? And this, honestly, it's, it's a fantastic book. If you've ever... If you've never knitted socks, this is everything you ever need to know. It's self-published, so you won't be able to get it anywhere. It's her own book. She's had it published herself. She's an independent lady of, you know, this is all, this is her business. And in the book, it explains everything that you'd ever need to know. Should I use DPNs? Should I use circulars? How does it work? How do you turn a heel? What's everything? And she said to me, once you've finished doing this book, this answers every question because she's had so many questions asked to her. Anyway, Nick, um, Christine is going to come on air in January. We have got to just sort out the date, but she's going to come on in January and talk about sock making. But we've just been able to buy just a few of these off her so that if you buy a hank of yarn, then you can buy a book as well and then you can do the whole thing together. But I wanted to bring this to you. And honestly, this is the best sock book I think, from what everyone says, and now I've been talking to lots of people, everyone says this is an amazing book. Um, finally, 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 we you will need knitting needles to knit the shawls. You need four and a half mil needles. Those are the single, um, the straight ones. You can also knit the shawl straight, but on circular. Okay, so the knitting needles, there they are on air, SAZW92, 5.99. Those are the single straight. They're 40 centimetre long because you need quite long ones for this. But there are a lot of people who prefer to knit straight on circular needles. So we've also got those. They're 80 centimetres long. So they're £4.49. So if you prefer, because you don't have to knit in the round on circular, but some people prefer to do that because of the weight on their needles. And the last thing... So I did say to Nicola, what else do we need? And she said, it's really nice. She always uses shawl pins to hold her shawls together. So um, there's two ways of doing this. You have the shawl pin. So you join it together. I should have done it on there. I'm going to have to work out to do this. And you put your, like that. And then I presume, how does it work? Do you go in and out like that? Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> there we go. So that holds it together like that. Doesn't that look lovely? I like that one. Or if you just want, this this is called a shawl stick. And I like that because it's got sort of like a feathery leafy thing. I told Nicola she could choose. I said, you can have two. So <laughs> she chose them because they're her shawls. 
and that's the second one. So look at that, three pound forty nine. It's wood. It's like proper wood, and it's got a really nice like leafy shape on the top. But that's great for holding any anything together like that. So we've got the brooch one, but then the stick one. But isn't that lovely? And they are they are solid wood, and the brooch one is a flower shape, but it's got a really nice um, pattern to it. So you get the stick and the brooch bit, and you just put them together like that. How nice does that look? Knit your shawl, put the pin on, and you know you're supporting proper independent British retailers, hand dyed from the kitchen to the garden. Right now, okay, now I'm bored with talking about this because I want to meet Nicola. I want you to meet Nicola. So, good morning, Nicola. Hello. Thank you for coming all the way here. You're welcome. Was it a long journey? A couple of hours. Uh -huh. Right. Where are you from then? Well, I know where you're from. Tell us where you're I'm from. I'm from South Elmsall. It's near Doncaster, in the middle of Doncaster, Pontefract mm. and Sheffield. But I'm originally from York. Okay. So, why did you, how did you start hand dyeing yarn and why? I only, well, I started going to yarn shows over the last few years and mm. I've, I have always knitted and I've fallen in love with their dye jams. Okay. But then I met somebody, a friend, and who sells undye jams and I sort of got talking to them like yeah, you do yeah. to people at yarn shows and asking what would I need and I was told I needed some acid dyes or und undyed yarn and I took it some home with me mm. and I started we started over just over a year ago. Wow, so do you just like someone just told you how to do it and then you yeah. had to go? Yes, I had to go. And how do you choose your colours? Where, where do you start with that? I just l look on the internet for colours mm. or garden centres at the plants for colours. Okay, okay. I like going to garden centres and I like plants and I like <laughs> flowers. And what's your what's your favourite? What's do you have like a colour that you go to more than other colours? Probably the burnt orange one I like. I like mm. burnt orange, and I like very bright ones as well. Mm. What sells the best? What do most people like? The burnt orange one. This the blue one. The what blue goes one. really well. Okay. That one goes really well. Or I have some sell bright neons. Neons are very bright oh, as well. But yes. Oh, there's a bit of neon in There is, is some neons, the, um, but I do have some very bright neons. Oh, okay. And what do people make with them? And so they you make sell shawls, them. hats, mm. fingerless gloves, scarves, yeah, socks. Okay. And so why is this called a skein, not a hank? What's the difference? Well, I think hank's an old-fashioned way. I got, <laughs> I got, or it's an American term, isn't it? I think a skein. Oh, okay. But I'm used. I would call it a hank to me because I remember as a child seeing them as hanks. Yes. Yeah. And I you thought put it, it on somebody's hank. hands and yeah. you go like that to wind it up. And you just do four ply? I've got double knit as well. I sell double okay. knit, but the four ply sock yarn is the most popular. Is that just because that's the best it's, for socks? It's for socks, yeah. But I can also have sock yarn in double knit. Okay. Which is thicker, like for boot socks. And why is it? Why have you chosen merino? What's the reason? Because it's nice and soft. It's nice <laughs> and soft. And it's a bit of a luxury, I think, merino. Then just yeah. like acrylic yarns are very. They're nice acrylic yarns for blankets mm. and to put. I mean, I wash my socks in the washer. Do you? Yes. Do they not on shrink? A, no. That's I put amazing. all my socks in the washer. Is that because of the nylon in them? Yes. It's very versatile. It makes it more hard wearing. I just put them on a gentle wash, bully wash. Really? And with they don't end jumpers? up with like no. doll socks? No. See, that would worry me. I'd think, oh, I've spent all that time knitting them. No, no I never wash them by hand. <laughs> what about the shawls then? Can you wash you them? You can wash them. It's the same. Same. Well, it's the same. It's the same. It looks really nice, doesn't it? This has got neons in it, actually, the one I'm wearing. My neons. Oh, yeah, that's really lovely. No, it's, re it's so nice, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Susan sent us a photograph. What's... Oh. oh! There's Susan wearing one of the shawls. Oh, oh, she's got the blue one and the grey one. Okay, it's the Twink Knits kit she made in lockdown, Dance. sat in her garden. Oh, it's Aww. the blue and the grey, um, the blue and the um, pink and grey star. I don't know where I've got blue from, but the pink and grey, it's nice that one. It's really it's lovely, It's half and isn't half, it? it's a dipped one. This one's a speckled, as right. I call them, and this one... The dipped. There's a little difference here. <laughs> so how do you do a speckled one? I do it. I'll take the bow band off. Right. Give us a little demonstration without the dye. <laughs> I should have brought the dyes. <laughs> no, I can imagine the mess. We lay it flat. Too. Yeah. Like this, a speckled one. And on a piece of 
That's raspberry that's ripple. This raspberry ripple. Uh, oh no, sorry, we dipped this one first. Mm. Lemon because it's got oh, the it has. Lemon, it look, well, it looks chain. like sort of vanilla ice cream. It, it doesn't looks it? like vanilla ice cream. It's you know to get the lemon. Okay. And then we have a little sieve and we just sprinkle it all up. Wow. So therefore, everyone is different. Everyone's different. This one is a dipped one. We mix the dyes up. This is a powder. What goes on to make it speckled? Right. And this one, get the label off. Fruit pastel. Fruit pastel is dipped. So we have four bowls mm. or five bowls, depending on how many colours and how. So how do you keep them together? Do you just hold them like this? Table ties. Oh, okay. <laughs> Obviously. And then, you, as you say, we've got so many <gasps> wow. sections, and we dip into bowls. That's I amazing. Them. So and I then you along. hang them on your washing line. I uh, put a cable tie on. We had mm. a heat to them to make the citric acid. The, we so put them in the, a bowl of water. We soak the yarn first. Yeah. Then we add citric acid into the bowl of water, just a little bit. Yeah. Then I use the acid dyes. Then we add the heat. Then we let it cool, because otherwise you burn your fingertips. And then we rinse them. Mm. And, and then I rinse them again in little bit of fabric conditioner and right. then I hung them on the line with a cable tie. <laughs> it's great, it's not, I'd love to come and see your back garden. I think about it, it looks amazing with all this yarn. But well, people say it smells lovely. When you open it up, you can smell it on this one. Yeah, it does smell really nice. You can nice. smell it just a tiny bit of fabric conditioner, just to make it so it doesn't, you can smell this, smells a bit sheepy. bit sheepy? You smell yeah, it does smell a bit sheepy. <laughs> not bad sheepy. It's not bad, but... It does smell a bit sheepy. That's the difference between them, that. Yeah, that smells like clean washing. Yeah, so we do speckles and then we, we, you know, dip dye these. Mm. Wow. It's, it's not it's as hard as it makes out. No, no, it, it sounds like, well, it sounds quite time consuming. It is time consuming because you've got to set the heat, you sprinkle it on. And you, yeah. you know, you go through your little processes and it takes about... Did you try different sorts of yarn when you first did it? So all sorts of yarn. Yeah, did you try different sorts yeah. before you came I've, along the white one? Yeah, I've got, I've tried, um, I can usually get some little free samples off my friend who, who mm. I know quite well now and who sells undyed yarn and he often sends me some with silk in and okay. different types. Mm. But I always go back to the... This the, is always the best one, I like the, it? yeah, the merino and I like the double knit. The double knit's sort of being more, getting popular now. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we'll do that next I time. I have a hat sometime, somewhere, We've got a hat and it's made out of the double knit. Okay, is that in the bag? It's in the bag. It's got a fox for a pom pom on. He's got it. Right, okay, one moment, caller. <laughs> I'm in the bottom of the bag. bag. <laughs> I should have had it. Did you know it is the one right in the bottom as well? No, not that one. It's the mustard one. <laughs> With the fox. That's um, just a ready made pom pom on that one. That's um, <laughs> acrylic. Have you found it? No. It's, we'll find it. It's there. there. Oh, okay. We'll find it in a second. I tell you what, I'll find it. Oh, while the you're cowl knitting. there. Look, you've got in your hand. That's the um, that's double knit. Double knit sock yarn. That one. Oh, and well that's, that's dyed. Lovely. Hand isn't dyed. It? That's beautiful. Oh well. And that we'll that's the grey one as well. You were admiring that one. That's the grey. That's lovely, isn't it? Which is the sock yarn in okay. double knit. Right. They're so nice, aren't they? I like the double knit. We'll have to go through the bag in a minute. <laughs> Oh. The hat's in there, it'd probably be at the bottom. Okay, so the blue shawl is currently in the lead. Right, so the where do shawl. we start with this pattern then? Right, we start at the beginning and we cut... I, I like to knit on straight needles because for the simple reason is because I knit with the needle under my arm. Which I think is really funny and I want to see this oh. happening. It, it, I, it's like going from socks on small, it hurts my wrist more. Okay. Which I prefer. I'll just have to put my glasses on because I won't be able That's to That's fine. Stay. I have to put my glasses on. Can't read anything. Can't even read the screen. I can read the pattern, but I can't see what I'm doing. So I make a slip knot and I'll cast on four stitches. I can't believe I don't know how you'd knit with your needles. <laughs> I like this way. I like my long needles. I know, obviously. I think it's just fascinating. But I knit the whole of the shawl on long straight needles. So we cast on four stitches. I bet there's loads of viewers out there going, yeah, I knit with my needles under my arm. I love people going, I It's the way I, I was shown by my mum when I was, you know, mm. very tiny. So I've cast it on four stitches. Now the first row, we, it's worked in sections, the pattern. Okay. So we have section one. And the first row is knit one, knit in front of back of the needle, knit one in front of back of the needle, and knit one. Okay. So to do the... So we've done the knit one. Then we knit in the front of the needle, but don't take it off, and then knit into the back of the needle. 
So just increasing them. It's, we're doing an increase, yeah, to make it bigger. And then we're doing the same again, knit into the front and knit into the back. And a knit one. Now we repeat this, then we do the second row, which is a knit one, knit in front of the back, and we knit to the last two stitches. Now mm. you can put your stitch markers on. Oh, because the kit comes with two, two stitch, stitch markers. Two stitch markers, but I tend to not put them on because I just know why. You probably knitted it quite a few I've times. I've knitted it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so the second row, you would do knit one, knit in front of the back of the second, on the second stitch, knit two stitches, then knit in the front of the back and knit one. And so you're just so you're starting in this corner at the very beginning and of you're the point in, and you're increasing, increasing like okay. that. So we're starting off here at the bottom and we repeat these yes. these two rows until we've got 84 stitches. Oh wow. With an increase at either side. So every time, every row we'll do knit one, knit in front of back okay, needle. Okay. So where do we get to where's 84 then? When you've done this section. Oh, okay. On right there. Then the second section is the stocking stitch section. Okay, show us that then. So on, so this is, I'm doing it in the blue now. Right, which is, this is great. I like that, <laughs> because we're swapping colours. So now we're on the one I'm wearing. You're on the, yes. We're on the blue skies now. So the first row, I've already sort of done, it. Say, let's say I've done all my 84 up to my yeah, stitches. Yeah, that's fine. So my second row. We're not going to give too much away. Section two, <laughs> on my second row, I would do, under my arm again, knit one. Knit in front of back, and then we purl to the last two stitches. So that's going to make my stocking stitch, which you'll see it because we're working sections from the pattern. Yeah. So you'll are we doing this lacy section now? No, the lacy section is oh, on course, the next lot of we needles. Do. We're on the, um, you see the difference, texture on your shawl? Yes. Oh, so where did we start then? On the beginning, on the garter stick section. Oh, we started here. Yes, right. and we're oh, working got it. up. Right. So oh, I've got it. I was on the wrong point, so I was confused. Yeah. Right, yeah. so we're now working the stocking the stitch, stitch section. section. Which is this one here. Okay, so got the it. Sec second section, so... Just one minute. Oh, that's nice. So you get the... So that's where you, you get the different looks in texture. You do, but you don't have to do that section if you don't want to. It's very easy to just not do yeah. that section but carry on with the beginning section. I think section. it looks nice and I think because it it's the, it up. because the yarn is hand dyed as well I think it's lovely to mix the texture of the stitches and the yeah. colours of the yarn so the colours and the textures are changing all the time. So this is this row done which I've just done a pearl row and I'm going up to my last two stitches so we do knit, knit and the ink link that's it this is lovely. Knit and knit into the back and then knit. So Ooh. that's my first two rows done on the second section. And you can see the difference. We've moved from the, the garter stitch to the stocking stitch section. I want to know how you've put yours on. Oh, you've put yours like this. I put mine as a V, yeah, and just pull the sides around, which is. Mm, I'm gonna have and then you can then. stick your shawl pin, you know, the. I usually take my pictures and stick my shawl pin at the side mm -hmm. of it. I quite like that. Looks nice for my dress, doesn't it? Mm. It goes nice. Mm. Well, I've got a turquoise scarf I often wear with this dress, so actually, this is perfect, isn't it? Have you got it? <laughs> yeah. You got it I just, I just thought that's it. You've got it now. Look so we we'll carry How on. Does that look? And then the next. I've got the look now. I look all hand dyed now. <laughs> and then we next. So we do that section. So we've done so the stocking stitch, stitch section. I've got a pointer now. Um, <laughs> and then the, it's the lace section is next, and that one is in. This colour, Autumn Walk. It's in Honeybee, this oh, one. Oh, you've stitched I've that one, I've right? got it in Honeybee and okay. I've wound it into a cake. Oh, well, that's... Oh, OK. So, so that's what it looks like when it's wound up? Yes. Wow. It looks totally like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, totally different. I do have a bit of cardboard, you yeah, know, to but stick still. it, but it stops it yeah. rolling around. You can actually wind it into a ball of wool, you know, just wind it around your hand right, so you with a chair. Right, you can Yeah, so if you put it around a chair, like... Like and then you just wind, well, you get someone yeah, to stand there. Yeah, with hands like yes. that and just so wind just stand it. stand there and don't move. And then you wind it into a ball. So you must do that first, though, mustn't You've you? You've got to wind it up, otherwise you'll get in such a tangled And dress. I have done that before, not wound it up, and then spend many, many hours unwinding it. So do get someone to stand here like this 
Yes. Or find a chair. Find a chair. Or a deck chair, isn't it? You I use it. it. Well, I used to use a deck chair to level my um, Swift, a and, Swift yes. and the other one. Which we're trying, we're trying to get hold of. I really want to get Swifts, which is what you use instead of somebody's hands to wind them up. So but we will get a deck chair. You know, just or a deck it, chair. A deck chair because it's got a back on the seat. Just so doesn't look as nice in your house. No. <laughs> so the third section, I do like that honeybee. It looks a really nice and lovely. It. it does look honey, doesn't it? It's a really lovely yeah. colour. So if you want um, the honeybee, you have to buy that as a hank. So you have to buy the shawl kit and then you'll have to buy another hank as well. We could actually swap, could we? If the no, no, we'll, no, we'll, just we'll confuse them. As them. The we'll kit. just confuse them. Confuse them, yeah. I was going to say. Well, actually, we'll confuse the warehouse more than oh. anyone else. <laughs> the warehouse will probably kill me if I start swapping swap in. The show. <laughs> so next we're going to do section three. Oh, the honeybee's so running low. How many have we got left? Oh, there's not many honeybees left. Not the numbers, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right, so do let's do the lacy bit. The lacy bit we do, the first row will be knit one, knit in front and back, knit to the last two stitches, which okay. I've already done, and a knit front and back. And, and knit so do one. you have to think much about your tension when you're doing this? No, don't worry. If you're a tight knitter, because I knit quite low, so of course mine's going to be probably bigger right. than most people because I just constantly knit. Yeah. But if you're a tight knitter, just go up a size needle. Okay, so, so it's not a problem. These are four mils. Four point five millimeters. Oh, four point five, sorry, yeah, they are four point five. So what would you go up to? You can go up to a five. It will cope with a five. It'll cope with okay. a five. All right. It's just that you're going to be very, you know, tight. But when you yeah. come to blocking, it does actually it's quite stretchy. Yes. Okay. So you'll makes it bigger. So if you're a tight knitter. So this I don't know what I am. The third section, so now I mean Yes, third section is the lacy section. Yes. No, we're on section four, actually. Oh, well, I yes, just because... Realized, yeah. But the third pattern. Yeah, because one is garter, yeah. two is stocking, three is yeah. garter, and then we're moving on to lace. So we uh, knit one, then knit mm. into the front of back. And now this is... You can call it... I call it a lace section, but people like some people will call it an eyelet section. Oh, okay. It's very, very easy to well, do. It is lacy, isn't it? It is lacy. We knit two together and yarn round needle. That's, and we just go completely to the last two stitches. So, knit okay. two together, yarn round needle. Knit two together, yarn round needle. Brilliant. And that's all I do on that row. And that goes, and that gives you... And that's the nice thing about it is that, that then traps the air inside those yeah. holes. It makes it nice and warm. And, that, and when I get to the stuff. end, because I don't think we'll have time, will we, to get to the end of it? Probably them? not. <laughs> then I'll just come back and do uh, the knit, knit one, knit in front of back, and knit the last two stitches. Right. Which you could, okay. And I repeat and then that, that six that times. And then that creates that look. So do you want to come? Can you come close on my holes, my lacy section? And then we can, then I can show you. Does it look? Look, oh no, you can actually see it quite well. I would, didn't know whether that colour would show well, but you can see that section. So what Nicola was doing was this first row going across here, but then when she comes back and does the the holes, it creates the eyelet section. So is it three rows? It's six there? rows in total. Oh, six. Because there's but isn't one. Isn't that lovely? So that gives you that really lacy effect. So you've got the differences in texture. You've got the sort of the bumpy garter, you've got the nice flat stocking, and then you've got the lacy section. But it's lovely, and I think the change in colour and texture is lovely. And we just repeat those sections as it says on the pattern. But you must, how many, you must have loads of stitches by the time you get to the end of it. 200 and... Wow. Which is why you need super long needles. That's why you need long needles, otherwise they'll fall off. Or a circular. A circular. It does get heavy, but... Cause yeah. People each to their own. There's no reason why you can't use straight mm. because you're just going backwards and forwards. Yeah, that's true. And I guess it's um, it's quite lightweight yarn. It's isn't lightweight. It? When you get to the top, I use a larger needle for casting off. So oh, okay. I'll go up to maybe a six millimetre, just so that it doesn't. You know, your final row is not very. It's not tight. Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah, because you want that to be able to drape nicely, don't you? Yes. And then I just pin it out on some firm little square boards and spray it with water and block it. Okay, so you don't it wet overnight. it first, you pin it. I pin it out, that edge, two side edges. Just to make it straight. Yeah. Mm. Try and make it straight. Well, it <laughs> just some ordinary pins I use. I don't use these fancy pins or anything on some just square foam mats, you know, the children's play mats. Yeah, yeah. And just and spray it with water and leave it overnight. And, and it, opens it, all, it opens it all up. The oh, section. I see. So once you've knitted it, is it You'll clean? You'll notice, it, yes. Okay. It's a lot smaller, but it does it does stretch. It does stretch it. You Ooh. can you can feel it. You know how much it'll actually from there 
that's probably what it's like when it comes off. But if I block it, it goes like that. Okay. It's quite squidgy. That's lovely, isn't it? Now I really like that. <laughs> so there are three kits available. We've got the um, Blue Skies one, which is the one that I'm wearing, that uses this yarn, isn't it? It's still the most popular. It's such a nice colour. I just like the way that it covers whatever the... It's, we should have called it whatever the weather. We should have done <laughs> our stormy weather. Because it's like <laughs> stormy grey. Yes. Bright blue Mediterranean, so it's blue skies. So in the kit you get 100 um, grams, which is 400 metres of this four-ply 80% merino wool hand-dyed by Nicola in her back garden yarn, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound as nice as twink knits, does it? <laughs> <laughs> bum twig knits but all all british wool yeah yeah all british wool all dyed in britain even the dyes i buy from the mm. uk they're manufactured in the uk okay. just up the road from me for oh really yes oh that's really nice it's very local they're very local very very local you get the full pattern that tells you everything you need to know and two stitch markers now we haven't put the needles in the kit because so many people have their own needles yes. already and um, it just increases the price that you might not want. But if you don't have the needles, remember we have both the straight or the circular and the sizes you want. If you look on the um, on the website, you'll see it below the watch now. Everything is there. So that's the blue. We've also got the Raspberry Ripple, which I love. Oh. I'm going to wear the blue and I can't bother to change now. I love that one. This is very spring and summery isn't it but won't that look lovely i mean you know nicola's wearing a similar color it's similar a it's similar color with that but it's just a really oh careful your microphone <laughs> and i forgot about it but... oh, we won't be able to hear you um it's just you know a really lovely springy summery color that you can wear really you know it just depends on what you're wearing and what you want to do so you can wear it like i am that's what's that one this doesn't have a name, this one. I um, don't usually tend to name the That's yarn. a I nameless have, one. It's a nameless one, but, but it's the, with the neons in it, say, look. Oh, how that's really nice. It's really bright, this one. But this Vasby Ripple one is lovely because it's so soft. So, obviously, again, in the kit, you get the whole hank skein this one's open, look, if of um, Raspberry like Ripple. Across? No, no, we're not allowed <laughs> to do that. Oh. So, that yeah. you can see Nicola's got their... Um, a whole hank of it opened up but you can see how it really is raspberry ripple but also what it looks like when it's knitted up it's lovely isn't it lovely. um and then finally we have autumn walk which is funny when you look at the hank of yarn it comes in as sort of you it looks like it's going to be very individual colors but it when it's actually knitted up look what it looks like there oh That's this lovely, is the um it? dipped one i'm going to open this one up oh i see it there um See, so look how Nicola's Different got hers opened up, but it really is in stripes. But it's funny, isn't it? When you knit it, it doesn't come out in stripes. But no two shawls will be the same no. because I knit quite low, so somebody will knit quite tight. It'll be yeah, it'll be it'll very different along. depending on how you do it. But that's a lovely autumn colour, isn't it? That will go lovely with any of your autumn clothes or deep reds or black. If you're wearing a black coat and you want to jazz it up a bit, any of these scarves will go well. And then remember, we do the two scarf pins as well. If you want to wear one of those, there's the the pin with two mm. bits, which is called the flower brooch, I think. That's that one. Um, and that works like this. Now I know how it works. <laughs> That's it. Yes, it's called the wool lilac shawl pin stick in garden because you get a pin and a stick. Um, and there's the one that's just the stick. So it depends how you wear it. If you're wearing it like me, you don't need one. But if you want to wear it where you've got it wrapped round you, like we did on the, um, on the model, here if you want to wear it like that then you can just put the stick through like that okay. lovely looks very smart doesn't it <laughs> anyway so um if you want to buy just the hanks of yarn on their own undyed we have six different ones for you um i'm going to risk them quickly because i want because i want to talk about socks so there's honeybee which is shades of Deep sort of oranges and browns and creams and grey. Very limited. Um, you only get one, obviously, because the website picture looks like you get two, but obviously you don't. You just get one. Um, second one is Cottage Garden, which is shades of pink and purples and earthy tones, just like, like a cottage garden, actually. It's a really lovely colour. 
Then we've got this really sugared almond, which is very baby. So if you've got any baby knits, that would cover it really well because it is four ply, it is merino wool, but it is strong. And remember what Nicola said, you can chuck it in the washing machine. It's amazing. On a delicate wash. <laughs> sugared almond is coming in now. Oh, that's sugared almond. No, that's fruit pastel. No, it's not. I've done sugared almond. That one. Oh, the graphics. Sorry, the graphics are just coming in now. I'm sure I'd already done sugar down. They're trying to confuse me. <laughs> right, next we've got hydrangea bouquet. It's like a hyacinth bouquet, isn't it? Hydrangea bouquet. <laughs> which is the colour. Colour of hydrangeas, whether you want pink ones, greeny yellow ones or blue ones. That's all the colours of a hydrangea. Okay. Next is fruit pastel because that's oh, it just looks like yummy sweets, doesn't it? Like a whole packet of fruit pastels. I'd be eating the green ones first because they're <laughs> my favorite. I don't like the orange ones, so you can have them, but I like the green ones. Um, and then finally, we have Pansy Parade. I like that one. Look at that really strong purple there. Imagine this in a pair of socks, it would look amazing. So also, we have this Super Socks book, which really is the sock book, written by Christine, who's also known as Winning Mum. She's got thousands of followers, thousands and thousands, because everybody wants to know how to make a pair of socks. And with this hind eye yarn, you see, you can get stripy ones without even trying. So, um, Nicola, how do, we, how do we make a pair of socks? Where do we start? It's a very easy book. I've always wanted to make socks. Mm. And this is the best book, I think, because I can make socks with them. We start off with our double-pointed needles in Christine's book. Okay. And we cast on 60 stitches. Right. And it's a rib. We start at the top, we start at the cuff. And okay, we work the top work down. Yeah, right. we work down with it. So we do a rib. So mm. I've started over. This is the um, cottage garden, what I've got on the oh, needles. Oh, that looks nice. A little mini one and <laughs> and a big one. Yes. And is that what it looks like knitted up on your? And that's the other one knitted up because we move on to circulars. You can have a choice. But okay. I find that because double pointed having four needles is a bit too much. So yeah. I find it easier to. And it says in Christine's book to work, start off on double pointed, cast on sixty stitches, and do a couple of rows on your needles, and then transfer it onto circular. Okay. So the next thing. I've got another pair of circular little mini, we use little mini circular needles. Right. I think they're 20 something centimetres long. Okay, just little, yes. Just and we just go straight socks. from, when I've, I've done, I've done three rows. So then we just go transfer it, just knit straight onto the circular needles. So I just go like this. You can't this. put these under your arm though. No, I can't put them under my arm. It's more work on my wrists. I feel really. Okay, thing. we've got a message. Um, mm. What gorgeous wool ordered some flipping it. Oh, I can't even read that. Even, do you know what? Even if I put my glasses on, I can't I can read that. See, I can see right. better without Fascinating my demo. I think this this is the underarm way was used by the Shetland knitters, oh, but I've yeah. never seen it before. I like that. Oh. Okay, we've got another message from Patricia. Loving the product. So please, you hold your needles like me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there'll be loads of people. I, uh, Depends where you live, doesn't it? I don't know, because I've, I've, I've seen my mum used to knit with those under, so I'm Well, I was talking to um, a man who sells knitting, one of the knitting needle suppliers, and he said the full, further north you go, the longer the needles get. Mm -hmm. So as you go further north, people well, uh, knit with them under their arm. But in Wales, apparently they have very short needles. These are very short, they're not the... But like really, you know, they, they'll, cook, they'll do I whole feel more clumsy with needles. smaller needles. So I go along this row doing minute two pearl toe, and then when I get to the end, I'll just, it's a bit long. I'll, but I, it's really I'll nice it, to see what it looks like. I'll get it, it onto my circular needle and I'll put a stitch marker on. Okay. I've got a little one on. So I'll just take my rubber stoppers off so I don't lose my stitches off my needles. And I've got a little, I've, so I've done the rib on, rib on yeah. here, and then I'm just doing all rows knit. You don't need to do a pearl row. Or anything on the socks because of the circular oh, because needle. Oh, because circular. Oh, yes, it's so a very amazing. clever circular. Because you don't have to do any. Yeah, that's no, true. You don't need to. Do. And it looks so lovely. When, you know, when you see the yarn like this, I mean, it looks lovely. But when it's knitted up, it's really actually. I really quite like this one. It's and then really my stitch, nice. My little stitch marker. 
You're going to have to finish these and knit a whole pair of socks in these now, aren't you? I will do. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like to know because I, I don't like to wind it back up. No, no, that's true. But that's lovely. It's so pretty. And then isn't I just it? go round and round, just doing so many knit rows oh, okay. to whatever. And it I says guess in and in the book, the book she explains. She expli yeah, all the way through, and there's photos and there's oh, pictures, just, and then you come, to, you do shape your heel, and you do your gusset, and it's. A, she did say to me because I was chatting on the phone. She said, you know, everything that people have ever asked her is in, in here. The book. It is easy. I'd, I always wanted to knit socks, and if it wasn't for Christine's book, I wouldn't be able to <laughs> knit. I wouldn't be able to knit socks. And you put them in the washing machine. And I put them in. I, put I them can't believe in the wash. that. I tell you what, that is the beauty. So 80% merino, 20% nylon. You and can you wash it, it by them. hand if you want to. So remember, all of these wool come from the UK, from British sheep. They do. British sheep. With what? Do they live up the road from you? Oh. Where did the sheep live? <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> in Britain. In the fields. <laughs> in the fields. The sheep live in the fields. <laughs> but I don't I know where the sheep find live. out off my... She's going to find out where the sheep live. Off my friend. They are British he'll be sheep. He'll be watching today. And he's going to find out where they live. But they are British sheep. and then they're, they're all over the country. They're all hand-dyed by Nicola using her own dyes from dyes that come from here. And, you know, and it's really nice that we can support you know, local, local people, we can, you know, somebody like Nicola who's creating these, and these, you know, these are works of art. I'd love to see what mine looked like if I had to go. I think I wouldn't be very good at this. I, I'd have you can't, you, it's so easy to do. No, i tell you why I wouldn't be very good, is I'd have every colour. I'm not very good at just sticking to just a palette. I'd go, oh, I love all of them. I mean... And I'd have 20 colours and it would look like... This has got about six colours, or oh, five colours. Yeah, but I think I'd end go. up with... Um, too many colours. I think I'd end up going, well, I'll just have cream then. Oh. Because, but you know, choosing this colour selection together, I think that that's, takes quite a talent to be able to do that. See, that's an easy one to do. Mm. I, I think. One hank, one hank is a pair of socks, remember, or a shawl. Or a hat. Or a hat. Or some fingerless gloves. Yeah, or fingerless gloves. But remember, baby as well. Great for baby knits, isn't it? Definitely. You'll get a cardigan out of it, a baby's cardigan of 100 grams. Yeah, you would. Yeah. You'd get a matinee jacket, yeah. wouldn't you? Out of you 100 do. grams. Yeah. Or more, you'd probably get the booties as well. You'd probably get the booties and returns. So where have we got to on the socks? So you're just going round, round and round and round and round. and round and just moving my stitch marker till I get to the next part in the book. And it's just knit all the way? Just knit now. There's no pearl rows. It's lovely. Into this... And that's, oh, well, that's Cottage Garden, this isn't is it? Cottage Garden. I really like Cottage Garden. I think I like... It knits up. No, I like Blue Skies best. Mm, and then I think, yeah, for the, for the shawl. Oh, that there. basket and ripple's very nice that we've got on our model, isn't it? Knits up. And remember, we do also have the shawl pins. Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? Now, it does look like more like Cottage mm. Garden. Now it's knitted up, doesn't it? Yeah. But that would make a lovely pair of gloves as well. I've got some similar ones. I've not. I've mm. dyed it up into, but it's not quite the same as this. And it does look nice in gloves. It's the pink, the pinky ones. I don't know if I've actually got them with me. The may, I may not have, but I I have got some a pattern designed mm. for to use sock yarn as well. Yeah, no, I don't think you have those with you. No. See, promise you. See, if I show everybody all the ones, all the got, other things. <laughs> yeah, we will have you in again. Look at this one. Oh, that's the DK DK Merino. It is lovely. Mm. That's a little a little temptation for maybe another show. But you can't have it now. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so these, these are great. So should we just have a quick last? Oh God, where was the time gone? Has it gone? <gasps> We've got five minutes left. So thank you very much, Nicola, You're for welcome. coming in and show us and all for doing all the yarn and showing us how it all works. It's been it's brilliant. Fun. I mean, that's really made, and it's so nice to see exactly how you do this because I had no idea it started off like this. Well, I thought it was important because when we chatted, mm. I'd not mentioned about bring in a plain one no and i i just no. said thought to myself the other day we need to show it how it actually starts absolutely. off absolutely from yeah. going there so and i like the fact it smells of sheep and it does it and smell that smells of fabric conditioner and it smells it's, yeah. it just smells lovely and so but it is beautiful and i i think it's a really nice that nicola's obviously experimented with different yarns and decided well merino wool makes it really quality and soft um, you know, and it's British, it's quality wool, but putting that bit of nylon in means you can put it in the machine and makes it a bit stronger, which is great if you're doing, well, it's great that you, you can machine wash it. You need nylon in for socks because it's hard wearing. Oh, you need it for socks, yeah, because it's hard wearing, but it's great for the machine and also if you're doing baby knits as well, it just means you can put it in the machine. So we have three kits available today. 
the shawl kits. One I'm wearing here, there's one on the model there, that's the Raspberry Ripple, and this is the Autumn Walk here. So I'm wearing the Blue Skies one, which is in the pack you get a hundred grams, which is 400 meters of yarn, which is a four ply, 80% merino, 20% nylon yarn, which makes it stronger, means you can also wash it. You get the pattern, you get two stitch markers, all packed in the organza bag. For the Raspberry Ripple kit, I think they're all the same now, yes. For the Raspberry Ripple kit, you get, you get the Raspberry, which one's in the lead, Hannah? Raspberry Ripple's in the lead. I thought Blue Skies was in the lead. Okay, so we are getting quite low on Raspberry Ripple, so if you've got it in your basket, I would suggest that you check out or we won't have any left. Raspberry Ripple is the one that my friend here is modelling. It's lovely, isn't it? Because it really is vanilla ice cream with the Raspberry Ripples on the outside, but it's ever so warm. I think it's all the sort of the lacy bits in it. It makes it really warm. I've got really it? hot in myself. I've left mine off now. Yeah. I know, I'm really liking this because actually... You know, it's really the difference when you take it off and you put it... Yeah, it does. It you feel it. Yeah, because it's not too much bulk. Sometimes, no. particularly the lightweight. Coat, you don't want a lot of bulk, no. do you? You just want a bit it's of... It's a very um, lightweight. It's very lovely. I like this <laughs> one. It's very lovely. Then the Raspberry Ripple, and again, remember you get the... F um, I keep getting them too mixed together. Yeah, 400 metres, 100 grams, not the other way round. 80% merino wool, 20% nylon, full pattern, and the stitch markers all packed in a bag. And the final one is the Autumn Walk, which is all these lovely colours of browns, golds and beiges. It is just like walking through the leaves in the autumn. Indeed. It's very rich colours. Feel on this one. Um, I also wanted to, the other thing we've got, do you remember, is the Super Socks book. And the reason I've got this is because we're selling single hanks of yarn. But I wanted to create, a, I wanted to give you something you could do with it. And I asked um, Nicola, and this is the book that she recommended. Super Socks is a self-published book by Christine Perry, otherwise known as Winning Mum. And it is everything you'd ever need to know about knitting a pair of socks. And like Nicola said, she wanted to knit a pair of socks. And without this book, she wouldn't have done it. And this is the sort of thing that we're trying to get for you on Yarn Lane. It's things that, you know, a small business or somebody who self-published things. So things that you can't find, because that's the point, isn't it? Is that we want to find you stuff that that isn't easy to see or find, but that we've had other people. Because every time I talk to somebody, they recommend somebody else, and then that person recommends someone else. And I, so far, I haven't completed the circle. So <laughs> I'm hoping that no one ever recommends the same person. We'll just keep going round and round. So the Super Socks books, 14 99 and it really is everything you need to know. It's all about how to do different sizes, so whether it's for you or you're doing them for children or for adults. It is, And it's all of those things that people really st struggle with. Then we have also the the hanks of yarn. We haven't got. Oh, we are running out of time, so I'm only going to show you a few. But they are all on the website. There's Pansy Parade, which is lovely shades of deep purple of pansies, the light mauve, and then the yellow that you get in the centre. Um, we've also got Honeybee. Honeybee, that's lovely. That's on the website. Sugared Almond, this is a great one. Well, obviously, you know, for when, whatever your own knits, but I think this is a really good baby knit as well because it is a mixture of pink and blue and turquoise and yellow. It's very, very pretty, isn't it? Imagine, and that is very, you know, that's all sort of, that's dyed and speckled as well. I'm getting to know the te technical <laughs> terms. <laughs> Don't know what that means. <laughs> so, Thank you so much for tuning in again today. I hope you enjoyed Yarn Lane. Hopefully this was a bit different because obviously we're trialing different things to see what you like. Um, we really welcome your feedback. We'd love you to join our um, fan page, our Yarn Lane fans. If you go onto the um, Facebook site, you can join us and then you can be part of our. And it's lovely because a lot of people are putting in pictures of things they've done. They're asking questions because obviously we've got about one and a half thousand followers now. I joined yesterday, so if anybody oh does right. need any help, okay. I'm so quite Nicola happy joined the fan page yesterday. So if anyone wants any help, you can just put a post on there. There's some love, lovely people. A lot of people are saying, "How do I do this? Where do I find that?" And everyone's answering them. So if you want any help and advice, we just want to chat to Nicola. To be honest, she's joined the or fan on page Instagram. now. <laughs> oh yeah, so you can join her on our Facebook page. But thank you for tuning in today. Yarn Lane is next on on Wednesday when we've got Sam from Adventures in Crafting coming back again and we're doing crocheted accessories, got some really nice things. We, we've got dream catchers, 
cowls. Oh, and we've got an amazing t-shirt yarn. You're going to enjoy that. Yarn made from recycled t-shirts. So that's um, a whole hour of different, different accessories for you and for your home. And that's on Wednesday. And then we will also be here on Saturday this week as well. So we're doing Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. If you keep to try, we're trying to do a few different days and a few different things, but please do keep in touch and let us know what you think. Um, yes, don't forget that a lot of this um, yarn and the shawls are selling really well. So if you have got it in your basket, please do check out. Otherwise you might lose it. So Cottage Garden and Honey Bee is about to go. So if it's in your basket, you best to um, check out now. Don't forget the shawl pins as well. I really like these because we, we sourced them and um, these were chosen by Nicola because she felt they would suit her um, shawls. So we've got the one with the flower brooch and one with the pin, but do buy them. Anyway, I'll see you again on Wednesday on Yarn Lane and thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>